Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to keep talking about resonance arrows and continue this discussion with more practice. As we dive more into resonance arrows and how to draw resonance structures, we need to bring up formal charge because formal charge is imperative in resonance structures. Here's some examples of ways you've already seen resonance structures that have formal charge. And you really do need to include resonance structures with formal charges because if you leave off the formal charge, sometimes you accidentally draw a completely different compound. For example, if I take this first one right here and I redraw it down below without that positive formal charge, now I've completely changed the structure because the carbon at the end, which only had three bonds up there, now has four bonds. And so it has a different number of hydrogens and it's a different structure. If you're looking at the next one, again, if I redraw this without that carbon formal charge, then it's saying that there's a hydrogen here instead of no hydrogen. This final structure, if we redraw it without the formal charge, it's not as bad. Sometimes you actually might see certain textbooks draw it without the formal charge. I'm not a big fan of that. You gotta put in the formal charge. Even though this last one isn't technically wrong without the formal charge, in my class, it will be. Because if you're going to start drawing resonance structures, you need to know where the excess electrons are. And formal charge helps with that. You can't start a resonance structure if you don't know where the excess electron density is or the lack of electron density. So you need to make sure that you're including those formal charges. Let's get a lot more practice with those formal charges and resonance structures. Now I'd like to talk more about the curved arrows. I know in the last video we talked about some of those curved arrows, but we didn't really write a lot down. What I wanna do is show you exactly what's happening with the curved arrows because honestly you cannot see this too much. Remember in the last video I told you that when I was a student I would look at these and think I got them on Monday and then on Tuesday I go, mm, I can't do it anymore. That's what resonance is like. I mean it's just going to be a roller coaster of understanding. You're going to feel like you're, you're getting there and then you know you won't the next day and that's completely normal. When we're looking at these curved arrows, this one is saying where we're starting, it's saying take those pi electrons and put them here to make a new bond. Let's write that out. So when we start at the middle of a pi bond, that's saying take pi electrons, and when we point to the middle of a sigma bond, it's saying make new bond here. Now, I'm using my caveman talk that doesn't have all of the words in it because I feel like resonance is so overwhelming that when I write complete sentences, <laughs> students get lost. But if you want a complete sentence, it would be take these pi electrons and place them as a pi bond between the two carbons where the arrow is pointing to. You see, it's too much. Let's look at the other one. The first arrow, the one that's pink, is saying take lone pair and make pi bond here. So that's what the pink one is saying. The green bond is saying take this pi bond and put the lone pair on that carbon. All right, so this one's a little bit newer. We don't see this one as often as you know, make new pi bond. Notice how we're pointing to the carbon. We're not pointing between two atoms. So when you end up uh, having a arrow point to an atom, you're saying put a lone pair on that atom. So this is take pi bond, And, and put lone pair on carbon. You might just spend some time looking at the arrows that are drawn either you know, in my videos or on other uh, resources that you have and just 
talk yourself through it and say out loud what that arrow means. That way you can really solidify it in your mind before you start having to draw arrows. Well, it's time to draw arrows. I want to give you an opportunity to do this. What might happen is when I ask you to draw curved arrows for these two uh, sets of resonance structures, you might try it and be like, I can't even do this. And if that's the case, what I would like you to do is unpause me, let me explain the first one to you, and then give yourself an opportunity to try the second one. But right now, I want you to look at where the electrons are being uh, displaced, you know, if they're where they are in the first structure and where they are in the second structure, and figure out how am I going to add arrows to this first structure to illustrate how I get to the second structure. All right, so that's what I'd like you to give a try. So, so pause me and give that a go. Okay, so for this first one, what I want you to see is what changes. At the beginning, we had a single bond here, and now we have a double bond. We had a double bond, but now we don't have a double bond, but we do have a lone pair. So now that we've looked at what is changing, we can also try to figure out how to get there. The other thing I want you to notice is this oxygen has three lone pairs, whereas this oxygen has two lone pairs. You're gonna pick a pair of electrons, any pair on the first oxygen, it actually doesn't matter, and it has to be a pair of electrons. It cannot be the charge. Do not start these arrows with charge. I even read on, wow, man, was it Chem Libre or, or Lumen Learning that they said, and some people started at a negative charge. No, they don't, not real chemists. We don't start arrows at a negative charge. A negative charge is not an entity. A negative charge is just a discrepancy. So we're starting our arrows at a pair of electrons. It doesn't matter which lone pair you're gonna choose, just pick your favorite one. I'm gonna pick this top one and that's where I'm gonna start my curved arrow. I'm gonna start my curved arrow and I'm gonna point it to the middle of that bond. And that's gonna say, put pi bond here. Notice how now my oxygen on the left-hand side that had three lone pairs, now on my right-handed uh, structure only has two lone pairs because one of those lone pairs was used to make the pi bond. Now this arrow violates a rule because the carbon that I'm circling in green now is going to have 10 electrons around it, which it can't. What do we need to do? Fix that. What we will end up doing is take a pair of electrons and then we will put it here. When I draw this arrow, sometimes students get a little freaked out because what they do is they look at it and they're like, but you drew your arrow at the single bond. Yeah, no one cares about that. So when you, when you draw this arrow, if you drew it this way, that would be fine too. Whenever you have a double bond written, nobody actually takes the time to distinguish between which one's the sigma bond and which one's the pi bond. So you just pick one and start your arrow there. Right, so you can draw it that way or the way that I had originally, which I'll put back, which is this. So whatever your choice is, whatever makes you feel happy. Now, if you didn't get the second one, I want you to pause me again and try the second one. But if you did, then let's get into it. Now let's give the bottom one a try. For the bottom one, we want to look at what changed first. What I see is that we have a pi bond here, and our other resonance structure, the pi bond, is here. To make this easier, I want to put numbers on these carbons. So I'm going to number this one, two, and three so we can compute, communicate better. For the left-handed side resonance structure, we have an empty space at carbon one and we have a sp2 hybridized at carbon two. So that sp2 hybridized carbon at carbon two, we're just gonna take that pi bond and we can place it between carbon one and two. We can do that because there's a hole where carbon one is. There's a lack of electrons. So we can take that pair of electrons and we can put it between carbon one and two. The key is that when you redraw your resonance structure and you draw the second one, where I have carbon three now has an empty place. We had a pi bond there before, which was contributing to our four bonds for that carbon. But now there is a lack of a pi bond because 
where we had one before where I'll highlight in blue, there is now not a pi bond. The number of hydrogens doesn't change. We went from four bonds to three bonds, which means that there is now a positive formal charge there. One thing that I really want to point out is your formal charge, your overall formal charge, is going to stay the same throughout all of your resonance structures. What that means is if you started with something that's neutral, you're going to end with something neutral. All of your resonance structures will be overall neutral. If you have a resonance structure that's negative, then all of your resonance structures should be negative. If you have a resonance structure that's positive, all of your, po your resonance structures should be positive. So net is overall, right? So the net charge on resonance structures, which I like to abbreviate RS because I don't like writing that out all the time. So the net charge on your resonance structures stays the same. This is a great way to point out if something's wrong. If you end up drawing your resonance structures, and let's pretend we did this, Let's pretend that we did the same example, but when we drew our final structure here, pretend we forgot to put in the positive formal charge. Then what you do is you come back at the end and say, if I started positive, are all of my subsequent resonance structures positive? And you look and go, oh, no, I forgot to put the positive formal charge in. Then you can pause and think, okay, where does it go? And with a little practice, you'll figure out that it goes there. I've got a couple more exercises for you, so let's move on to those. In this one, I'm stepping you up in difficulty. I want you to take the resonance structure that I drew with the curved arrow that I included and draw the subsequent resonance structure. I've already drawn the skeleton for you, so I've drawn how the structure is laid out, how all the single bonds. Now you're going to add uh, electrons, pi bonds, and formal charge. So give that a try and let's see how you do. Now that you're ready to compare answers, let's talk this first one through. The first arrow is saying, take this pair of electrons that's in the pi bond and place those electrons here. We will do that. We will put those electrons as a pi bond right there. When we remove a pi bond from the earlier location, this carbon now has one less bond. That carbon had four bonds to start with, and now it only has three. There's no magical hydrogen that showed up and filled its octet. No, it has a positive charge. When you're in my class, I want to make sure that you're being really particular about where you're putting the positive charges. I want you to make sure that you're getting as close to the carbon as you can while still being clear. Because as we start to move away and drop charges further away, it starts to kind of get ambiguous. And on exams, I will circle things and say ambiguous minus one, or if it's like kind of getting there, I'll write approaching ambiguous. Uh, so I just want you to know how particular uh, organic chemists tend to be. In this next example, the first arrow that I'm gonna start at is this one. This is saying, Pi, or pair of electrons forms bond here. I'm going to put a bond there. So here is my new bond. I still have two pairs of electrons on that oxygen, so I'm going to draw those in. And you can draw them in in the same location that they were, but you know I want to spread them out because of Vesper. That's just my thing. So I'm going to spread mine out. But if you ended up drawing them where they were, that's perfectly fine too. Now, our second arrow set is saying this bond puts a pair of electrons on that oxygen. So put electrons here on that oxygen. So I'm going to put those electrons in a different color. I'm going to put those electrons in green. And the electrons that were already there, I will keep in blue. And now let's go back and add formal charge. Hopefully we're getting the hang of formal charge so we can really easily go ahead and say that's negative and that's positive. 
Awesome, let's take it up in level of difficulty one more time. For this section, I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing, except I'm not gonna give you the skeleton of the structure. I want you to draw in all the sigma bonds that aren't changing, and then I want you to look at the arrows and figure out how the structure is going to look. What are those arrows communicating? Where are we gonna put our electrons in our subsequent resonance structure? So give me a pause and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it when you're ready. All right, if you are unpausing me, uh, I am gonna assume that you might need an extra hint. If you need an extra hint, this is the skeleton of these structures that didn't change. These skeletons are just me taking away the pi electrons, or sorry, the pi bonds, as well as the lone pairs, and just drawing everything that's left over. If you're ready to continue, then don't pause me, but if you just needed a little bit of extra help, then go ahead and pause again and try again. So if you're ready to continue, let's look at this first example together. Here I have a pair of electrons that's saying that pi bond is no longer gonna be there, that pi bond is gonna be here. Then my next arrow is saying this pi bond is going to turn into a lone pair and sit on that oxygen. So we're gonna put a lone pair on that oxygen. The two lone pairs on the oxygen that were already there are still there, and I'm gonna draw them in a different color to show that those are the ones that were already there. Now we should look at this and see if there is any formal charge. Here we had on the first structure a zero formal charge on every atom. When we draw subsequent resonance structures, we can still have zero overall charge, but individual atoms can still have uh, charges. This oxygen is very clearly negative. And if you got to that point, and you thought, oh yeah, I'm good. No, you're not, because your first structure is net zero, your second structure has a negative now. That means we're missing something. And what we're missing is this carbon had four bonds when there was a double bond there, but we took one of those bonds away. And when we took one of those bonds away, that created a situation where this carbon is now positive. I'm gonna finish this up by putting my end bracket on, and this looks like a good set of resonance structures. Now let's do the next one. For the next one, this lone pair is saying, we're gonna take this pair of electrons and we're gonna put it right here as a bond, right? When we point to the middle of a pre-existing sigma bond, this means form new bond here. So we're gonna put our new bond right here. Then our next arrow is saying take a bond and put it as a lone pair on this atom. Obviously, carbons that have a lone pair are going to be negative, so I just went ahead and added my negative formal charge, and I'm going to wrap up by putting in brackets. Awesome. This is going to take so much practice, like loads of practice. And don't get discouraged if it makes sense one day and then the next day it doesn't. This final exercise is a lead-in to our next video. This is what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to take a structure like this one and use curved arrows to generate all of the resonance structures, making sure we include formal charge brackets and the double-headed arrows that exist between the resonance structures. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, how the heck am I supposed to do that? There's no arrows on it. That's what the next video is for. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how in the world we're going to figure out how many resonance structures there are, when to stop drawing resonance structures, and how to draw resonance structures. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at resonance structures some more. We used formal charge in resonance, we started to look at arrows that were valid, and we went through a lot of examples on looking at those arrows and trying to draw what the result was. We wanna make sure that we're ready to begin to start generating resonance structures, which is gonna happen in the next video. You have to make sure that as you're working on resonance structures, that you are mastering skeletal notation and formal charge. Resonance is gonna be so much harder without those techniques already mastered. Thanks so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video. This is Katoni signing out.